Hutsuls are one of the ethnic groups of Ukraine, which preserved to perfection all of its traditions and ethnocultural distinctive features, typical for their language, clothing, rituals, folklore, decorative art, and music. People have lived for centuries in the Carpathian Mountains. They dwelt in houses they built with their own hands. Their houses are located, in particular, near river streams of clear water where the wind rarely blows. With time, the number of people who settled in the mountains increased. The Carpathian Mountains are rich in forests, so for the local folk, there were enough building materials and wildfowl to use them wisely in order to develop different forms of art. However, the people who lived on these lands could not lead a carefree way of life because of the variable mountain climate. Everyone had to adjust to the severe conditions. Cattle breeding was their major occupation. They bred sheep, goats, cows, and horses. Masters made different items, which was the main source of their wealth. But the main problem was poor land on the peaks of the Carpathian Mountains. So local inhabitants had to descend from mountains in order to sell or exchange their goods. Every owner rode a horse and two or three horses loaded with his handiworks followed after him. Travelers carried arms because nobody could guarantee them secure way. Hutsuls were armed always. Almost every man carried a pistol, gun, or a hatchet in 19th century. They rode horses and wore red clothes. Hutsuls were long-haired, mustached, and wore hats. People who lived in the mountains close to rivers were called Horeni. When there was not enough place, others settled on the tops of the mountains and were called Verkhovinci. And when the people dressed in luxurious clothes and riding on their horses descended the mountains down valleys, it aroused interest of Podoliani, people who lived on lowlands. Besides, Horeni played reed pipes to attract more buyers. People ran out of their houses to see this wonder. That was a real holiday for them. All the travelers, even women, rode the horses. <laughs> Women's horse riding caused the creation of two elements of a woman's suit called a zapaska, a wraparound skirt. Hutsul women rode horses like men, as opposed to European women, who rode horses side saddle. Pakutia women also rode side saddle. They wore foda and opinka, hutsul clothing, and rode horses in European style. Clothing and horse harnesses were decorated with different bright trifles. Besides, hutsuls played reed pipes, thus inviting their buyers to dance. It should be noted that clothing was very expensive at that time. It was easy to tell whether a man was rich or poor just by looking at his clothing. 
Rich people could hire servants for the whole year, promising them a full outfit. Young boys and girls from large families were employed to make such clothing. They worked in exchange for food and dress. My grandmother told me that she made embroidered shirts for the Cooperative Craft Society. This society was situated in Kuti. She did not receive pay for her work for a long time. She embroidered clothes and brought it to Kuti during the whole winter, but she did not get paid. In spring, she brought her embroidery to Kuti again and then received the overdue pay. So my grandmother walked by foot a long distance to all the villages. She went from Babin through Mali Rosen to Kuti and from Kuti to Kosiv. She told me that one woman from Lower Lands was selling her kerchief as she needed money to build a house. My grandmother had the money and bought the kerchief. Although she was from a poor family, she could afford to buy the kerchief that had no analogues in her village. The outer appearance told not only about wealth, but also about a person's intentions. Hutsul children under 90 years of age almost did not differ from one another, because girls did not wear their hair long. But when parents saw that their daughter has grown up, they stopped cutting her hair. By the age of 13 to 14, the girl's hair grown long again, and during this period of time her parents had gathered a dowry for her wedding. Sometimes matchmakers came to the girl's house impromptu and she did not have special clothing to wear for a wedding, as soon and a dress took up a lot of time. So her parents took a cow and a few sheep and went to Kosiv to a Jew and exchanged them for clothing. In a week the bride had proper attire for her wedding. bride had to have no less than three blouses. The maximum number of the blouses were sometimes close to 80. All the blouses were sewn by a girl before her marriage, because married women did not have time to sew. They had to take care of the children and husband and keep the house. A 
Ahunia has a special place in traditional clothing of Highlanders. It is short, often above the knees, and a very rarely long cloak of semicircular shape with a neckline only, which is soon round with a strip of leather and red cloth with sleeves. It is woven on sheep wool in a way that it looks like a big sheepskin with long wool. The clock is sewed with a closely woven fabric. Usually it is made of grey or white wool and less often of totally black wool. Hunya were made of homespun woolen cloth which contained not only wefted threads but also long slivers with the ends that were let out on the face side, hence the name shaggy or crotcheted Hunya. Carpathian inhabitants wear Hunya for half their life. They did not take it off in winter nor in summer. It is said that ship wool conserves heat when it is cold and it is cool in hot weather. Thanks to Hunya, people were warm and they could save wood to heat their houses. Also, Hunya protected them from cold-related diseases and radicalitis. Rajda is a complex of a dwelling house and household buildings, which form a closed, as a rule, a quadrangle yard. Rajda, with various constructions, high and low, wide and narrow, look like a fortress. You can enter them only through a gate. The Rajda were especially built to protect their dwellers against evil people, wild animals, or strong winds or snowfalls. We get to the old Hutsul house, where we together with the owner will witness the making of a new Hunya. A weaving loom used to weave Hunya and coverlets still stands in the house. The master carries the thread and starts weaving. The weaving loon can be compared with a musical instrument where every thread is like a string on a guitar or violin, which produces a genuine Carpathian sound. The Highlanders were not afraid of physical work, but at the same time they used mechanical instruments with great pleasure so they could save time. When a master wanted to paint a thread, he needed to fold it in a particular way. It was a simple process. Threads were twirled on a stick with a bifurcation. Somewhere we see how threads are colored in dubs. Already in the 19th century, Hutsuls actively used different colors. Nature inspired masters not only to create new products, but also mechanisms that facilitated the work of the people. The Carpathians, a magic land of people living in harmony with nature. <laughs>